Welcome everybody, it is me, it is the Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios Presents Tech Tuesday. And we're back at it today. We are coming at you with Chapter 14 of Linux Basics for Hackers. This one's all about wireless networks. Yes, I know, I'm a little late on this. I'm sorry, things come up, shit happens. I'm doing the best I can. Either way, I love you all though, and that's why we're here. So today, like I said, we're gonna talk about wireless networks. And before we get into Linux and looking at our Kali instance and how these uh, technologies work and how we're gonna connect to it through Linux, I wanna discuss a little bit about it. So the reason we are going to talk Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth networks is because they are a very big proponent of attack vectors for malicious personnel. And actually you, in your career, as you're going through as a red team or a pen tester. You wanna be able to establish connections with wireless networks and um, work on penetration testing and things of that nature um, and Wi-Fi cracking and all that stuff. And Bluetooth is another really, really big one, especially with how susceptible devices are becoming or were in the past. And you know, even with changes, Bluetooth is still a big attack vector. Being able to connect the devices um, you know, unknowingly or even if they know, sometimes they hit the A, ah, accept this connection button without even thinking about it. So Bluetooth and wireless are going to be huge now and always. Any wireless connection where you don't have to physically connect to something is going to be a major attack vector. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, technologies and kind of the terminology that we're going to use today. So when it comes to wireless networks, you have things called access points, otherwise known as APs. Those are just the different devices um, on a mesh network or something like a corporate network. You'll see a bunch of different hotspots. Those are access points. The core router and what holds the uh, actual networking is usually in a networking closet or in a main access area somewhere. Um, at home, it is gonna be your wireless router or, or whatever you have. Then you have an ESSID. Now this stands for Extended Service Set Identifier. It's the same as an SSID. However, it can be used for multiple access points in a wireless network. You have your BSSID which is essentially um, the unique ID of each access point. So each access point is going to have a particular, um, almost like a MAC address, that's your BSSID. And then you have the SSID, again, the name of the network. Um, you have channels. Now your channels, in the US, we are limited to channels one through 11, at least according to the book. I'm not gonna go in and research on whether or not they've changed that range, but the, uh, the channels that the um, router and the wireless network talks on, so you will see th things say channel one, channel four, channel two, channel eight. Some devices channel hop so that they can stay within range and you don't lose connection. And then you have power, which is the strength of your connection. Now, even though you are limited to the amount of power you can have within the US for, on a router or something along those lines, you can actually buy access points with really long antennas and those will give you a high gain um, connection, which means you can actually be further away and still hit access points that are miles away. And then there's different types of security. So you have things called WEP, which is WEP. That is the one of the first implemented implementations of security within wireless. That was actually how I got started breaking into wireless networks was breaking into WEP keys and cracking WEP. Then there was WPA and then WPA2. As of this book, all right, when this book was published, there's WPA2, which is um, pre-shared key, so PSK, which is what we're gonna talk about today. But then there's also radio servers and other enterprise technologies that you can get into. Finally, there's modes. Um, an access point always has three modes. There's managed, master, or monitor. And actually, it's not the access point, it is the um, wireless adapter. The, the networking card that you're using has managed, master, or monitor to tell it what mode it's in. And we will talk about those later. And then your range. So your wireless range. Access points are limited to 0.5 watts in the US range, um, approximately 300 feet or 100 meters. High gain antennas though, like I was discussing, can extend as much as 20 miles. Frequency, which is what wireless, how um, wireless networks talk, um, they operate on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency and the five gigahertz frequency. So those are just same, some things to take into account and to think about when um, dealing with wireless networks and as we go about this lesson. So without further ado, let's get ahead into it and let's talk um, wireless and take a look at these commands. So 
Um, just so you're aware, I had to play around and it took me a while to get my router to work um, to connect the right way. So let's disconnect for now so that we don't have anything going on and we can do this the right way. Now, the first command I wanna show you all is actually gonna go back to um, our original networking lesson. So you have IF config. So back in chapter three, when we discussed these things, there is IF config, which is interface config, which is probably gonna get mad at me right now, or so it seems, there it goes. Um, and you can see ETH zero, which I disconnected my ethernet for the, for the virtual machine, so there's nothing there. And then you have this uh, wireless LAN zero here. Okay, um, so that's our wireless connection. Now, if we clear that um, and we look at IW config, which is just going to give us our interface wireless configuration. So WLAN zero is unassociated, so it's not attached to anything. The nickname of our wireless card is Wi-Fi at Realtek. Okay, um, the mode is managed. Now, what managed means? It means it's ready to join or has joined an access point. Then there is also something called master, which means it is ready to act or is acting as an access point. So you can set up different access points throughout. Then you also have monitor mode, which we are gonna discuss a little bit later. You have your frequency right here. As we can see, this is operating in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And you have a few other um, things here like your receive, transmit, um, your signal level, things of that nature that you'll see change once we actually connect to a network. So the other thing we can look at is IW list, I W L I S T. We're just going to hit enter. So IW list is going to give us, we choose the interface we want and then we can tell it what to do. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is IW list W land zero scan. And while this is, what this is doing is scanning for wireless networks that are within range. So once that's done, we see all these different connections and wireless networks around. Some of them are not ours, some of them are ours. The one we wanna concern ourselves with is this Netgear 20, so this cell five. So as we can see, it is running a PSK on WPA2. So that's gonna be the security mechanism behind it. Um, it's ESSID is gonna be Netgear 20. And here's your frequency, which is the 2.4 gigahertz, and it's on channel nine. So we can see all this information there just from doing a scan. And we can also see the MAC address of it. So this is the MAC address of this particular router. Um, you know, going through, there's so much information here, right? Channel nine, address, the encryption key, bit rates. Um, what else? The quality, the signal level, all this information. So it all goes really well as you start playing more and more with wireless networks, you'll get a better understanding of all these different things. So now that we know that, let's take a look at NMCLI. And we're gonna say dev Wi-Fi. So here's gonna be the kicker. All right, so what NMCLI is, is it's your network manager command line interface. So this button up here when you're in Kali is actually a, almost like a GUI network manager, right? So I can go in here and just like Windows and everything else, I can tell it what to connect to. But I can also use NMCLI. And for ours, we're gonna use NMCLI and we're gonna say connect to Netgear oops, 20. And we're gonna say password, happy Raven 323. So as that's connecting, all right, and that may take a little bit of time, as anybody who deals with wireless networks knows, sometimes this can be a little bit tedious and connecting to a wireless network um, can take a lot longer. But as we see here, we have device wireless LAN zero successfully activated with this long UID. So good, and MCLI works. And if I had internet access on this box or plugged into this router, I'd be able to access the internet. Um, as opposed to that though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you what our IW config looks like now. So now we can see that we're in mode manage and we are connected to an access point. We're connected to this Netgear 20, still on the same frequency. Here's the MAC address of the access point we connected to and the bit rate. And if we had any data to send or receive, that's what we would be doing. 
and we have our signal level link quality is 100 100 power management's off and then the encryption key so all this information is there so let's clear that out so that's how you would connect to a network and this is really using the command line interface and this allows you to see all this information without having to go into a GUI or anything like that you can run everything all these commands from the terminal so it's a huge help understanding these commands and the information that it gives you now moving on let's take a look at how we can go about breaking into wireless networks or monitoring wireless networks or looking at traffic on wireless networks it's the next part of this journey so the one this is where i got my start so for anybody who wants to talk the other tools like reaver and things like that we can handle that at a different time but for this book and this chapter and for the journey i started on it's going to be with the air crack suite so for those that don't know the air crack suite is a huge list of tools that's built into a lot of other tools these days but i started with all the original commands which is why i love that he does uh, that occupy the web does this in chapter 14. so the first thing we want to do is airmon dash ng and we're going to say start wlan zero it's probably going to even look me there we go so now all right found two processes that could cause trouble kill them using airmon ng check kill so when your um wireless card and things of that nature are already running and you're connected this is why you need a duplicate wireless card which i do not have but i also am not on the internet either so we may not be able to get the traffic that we want but i'm at least going to show you the commands and how these things would work um so now if i do arrow dump dash ng wlan zero come on uh it's not there so i w config all right so we need to do we need to kill that connection so we're gonna go up here and we're actually we're just gonna do what did it tell us to run so let's do airmon dash ng check kill airmon dash ng check kill so now it's going to disconnect us from our wireless network and we're gonna do that and now let's do start there we go so now if i do IW config, uh nope that's still managed even though we're not associated uh airmon dash ng uh, why is this not starting now monitor mode enabled so unfortunately it does not look like this is going to work arrow dump dash ng wlan zero on no all right let's take mon off and just do wlan zero it's probably going to yell at me i'm not going to lie because this is not in monitor mode as we saw it said managed Ah, oh, we got it sweet cool so arrow dump gives us the wireless networks shows us the power shows us if there's anything connected and the data coming over it and all these other things and no i'm not going to mess with my own personal network so we're not going to mess with that but what we could do is we could run you have to run three different windows for something like this to work so let's clear this and let's open up a new tab Control shift T, control shift T. So we're gonna run three tabs. Pseudo SU. Just because it's easier to do it this way. Pseudo SU. There we go. Alright. So for the first one, what we're gonna do, uh, we need the channel that, that was running on. So let's take a look. We are on channel nine. Okay. Clear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say arrow dump dash ng dash c nine dash dash whoops dash b s s i d um I don't have that saved so let's pull that up here uh, I W list wlan zero scan well that's pulling up and then we'll get the bssid for that then we're going to write this to 
netgear 20 psk and wlan zero and this bssid uh i killed the network manager awesome that's okay we have another way we can do this i should be able to do ssid and just do netgear 20. uh it doesn't like that arrow arrow dump dash ng help uh filter aps yes so we can use essid okay cool so let's just put an E here. And that should work if it's going to give me what I want. It doesn't look like it's going to. Uh, let's just take the ESSID out of it. Since I know I was on channel nine. So what, what setting it to channel nine does is it stops your monitor from channel hopping. So you're not looking for access points on a bunch of different channels. Um, but as it looks like this does not want to find my access point right now, let's see if the router channel hops. We're not gonna write this to file yet. We're gonna just do that one more time. Let this channel hop and see what it finds. All right, so we've got a device, but we're not getting any wireless networks now. That's not what you want. Interesting. Yeah, see, we're seeing devices that are connecting, but we're not actually seeing. Um, I may have to start monitor mode again, which is fine. So let's do arrow mon air mon dash ng restart wlan zero. Uh, let's do check. So since restart isn't there anymore, let's do check showing anything start oh there we go now it's pulling data in so this is the BSS ID we want so let's do control C let's quit this uh, this right here copy selection okay cool and then, we still on channel nine? Yep. Dash B S S I D. Paste selection. That. Yes, I. Ah, I love when I do that. Yes, I did. So let's let this load and we should be able to get what we need. So while that's running, I don't have anything to de-auth, but what I can do, so we're not gonna run air replay. Um, just for an example, if I had a device to de-authenticate, to force it to pass along the code, you would, or the, um, the information necessary for you to crack a wireless and password, you would run air replay, the auth 100 dash a which and then the bss id so your bss id would be you know this one for mine dash c the station so channel and then wlan zero so it would be nine so that's what your command would look like um to run deauthentication if we had anything to deauthenticate which we don't and even right now this is once again failing I don't understand why it's failing, but it's failing. So instead of channel, let's just put the BSS ID in there. Let's see if when it channel hops, it'll filter that BSS ID. All right. 
either way, um, we're not going to deauthenticate. I have no devices connected to this to deauthenticate. Um, so then the next thing would be um, if we do aircrack ng w wordlist.dic dot dictionary um, dash b once again your bssid so we would paste our selection for our bssid in there and then we would say netgear 20 psk dot cap because in here if i do ls see these capture files that's what we would be going against which so we have them labeled so many times so if i do ll it would be this one, I believe. Nope, nope, what would be the newest one? Uh, here. So that would be the newest one. You would take that capture file and you would run a password crack against it. Unfortunately, like I said, um, I am not running a card meant to do packet injection or anything like that. And even monitor mode is kind of tricky. So I would recommend an Alpha 500 or a Panda wireless card if you can get your hands on one. Unfortunately, both of mine broke. So the offensive side of this is a little bit tricky. Um, but those are the commands you would use to do it. So once again, to do the actual crack, you would do air crack. Now, I'm going to give you a little addition since we're on the wireless side of things. I'm gonna show you Reaver. So if I run Reaver and I say, I wanna do dash B. So Reaver dash I, W zero dash B and do this paste selection whoops nope I copied that on accident WLAN zero and I need I don't have that anymore okay so yeah I need the BSSID uh, Aeromon actually have the BSS ID right there. So let's take this, copy, copy selection, go back here. Whoops. Dash B. Oh, you can't see this at all. What am I doing? There we go. Reaver, dash B, and paste selection, and hit enter. So it's going to wait for a beacon frame from the router. Um, on looking at interface WLAN zero. Again, this is not in your book, just adding this in, okay? This is one of the newer tools that came out. This is actually how I got my start um, in breaking into WPS was using Reaver. Um, so being that I don't know if this has WPS, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if it has Wi-Fi protected setup on it. Um, there's no guarantee that this will work um, or even that it's gonna find it because this router seems to be and my wireless card seem to be having fun with me right now. But this would be the tool to go after the Wi-Fi protected setup. The other one is, if I do, whoops, I don't want to clear. Wi-Fi is another one, which is awesome, um, but it cannot enable monitor mode. So if I do arrowmon, arrowmon, dash ng, stop, wl zero, Clear, now let's try Wi-Fi. Yeah, so monitor mode on WLAN zero isn't working. Um, the driver and, the, and the, the wireless card that I have are what's causing all these issues, but at least you got to see some of what happens. Now, this is where we're gonna get into some of the fun things. So, some more of the fun things, actually. This is gonna be Bluetooth. So if you don't have it, what you wanna do is do apt install BLUEZ. Now, I already have it. So we're good. And then we're gonna take a look at HCI config. So this is gonna tell us our um, Bluetooth device, MAC address, and then a little bit of other information. So it's similar to IW config or IF config, but it's for Bluetooth devices, okay? Then you have HCI config. Uh, then you have HCI tool, so HCI T-O-O-L. And it allows you to do a bunch of other commands here, and we'll get into some of those. Um, and then HCI dump allows us to sniff Bluetooth communications. So 
the first thing we want to do is HCI config HCI zero up and then we're going to do HCI tool scan and it's going to scan for Bluetooth devices in the area. Let's see what this finds. So it found my TV. That's about it. Okay. So HCI tool INQ, I believe that is. Yep, it's going to inquire about that device. Inquiring gives us the clock offset, the MAC address, and the class of the device. So then the other thing you could do is HCI tool, and actually let me copy this because we're gonna use it here in a second. It's funny that it only found my TV upstairs. Ha. Help gives us everything we can do with the HCI tool. And then you have SDP TOL browse and paste selection. Let's see what it gives us. So this gives us a lot more information about that device, right? It gives us what it is, Samsung Smart TV, um, L2 cap. So there's a lot of information you get just from Bluetooth and exactly, you know, what everything is and what's entail what it entails. So then the other thing we want to do to see if something's up, we can do L2 ping. So layer two ping paste selection so we're going to paste that mac address number of packets and we're going to say three enter and what do you know we just pinged my tv via bluetooth yes there's a lot more you can do this is not a class to show you how to break into things um this is just to show you the tools techniques and things that you can use so saying that look i get it i wasn't able to show you all everything and again, that just comes down to the technology that is in use. Unfortunately, with certain wireless cards, there are things that you cannot do. I had a fight just to get this driver to work, just so you can even see some of the wireless connections. So bear with me. If you wanna help, please feel free to look in the description below so that you can fund everything that I do here to help you all out. Otherwise, it's all out of pocket. So I'm doing the best I can. I love you all. This has been another amazing Tech Tuesday. And saying that, pretty sure the Cyber Overlord is gonna be calling me up soon. So. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, leave them down, leave all those comments down below. Check out the description or I don't know, the first comment that I'm probably gonna leave here for all the ways you can support this channel, support the Cyber Warrior and all of the shows and ventures that we do. We have a lot more content coming out and coming to you. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Otherwise, I will see you all next week with chapter 15 from Linux Basics for Hackers. It's been a great show. Take care. I love you all and stay amazing.